The famous Chinese classical novel The Outlaws of the Marsh, The Nine Tattooed Dragons, Chapter 4, narrated by Robert Xiaoliang. Well, Wang Jin, the instructor of the 800,000 Imperial Guards, had to run away from office with his mother. When Marshal Gao heard this, he flew into great passion. What? The crook has fled, hasn't he? He shouted with all his might. We'll find out where the scum has gone. He immediately issued a writ to every province and district, ordering the arrest of the deserter Wang Jin. Well, let's now only speak of the deserters. Mother and son were both so pleased that they have left the capital, but they had to keep going eating and drinking all the way when needed, and took rest in the night and departing at dawn. They were on the road more than one month. One day, as it was getting dark, and Wang Jin, with his bundles on the carrying pole, was following the horse on which his mother was sitting. Oh, heaven! By mercy, we have run away from the snares and pitfalls that were set for us to step in. It's not far away from Yana now. Oh, gracious me, Marshal Gao can send his men after us if he wishes, but he won't do anything big to me. Well, they were both so happy about their situation that they moved on without noticing they had passed the inn where they might have lived in that night. They continued all evening without meeting a single village. Where could they put up? Well, just as they were almost Feeling helpless, they saw in the distance a lamp glimmering through the trees. Well, thinking Wang Jin, suppose we go there and explain politely that we need shelter for one night and we'll leave tomorrow morning right away. When they got to the wood, what they found was a big old manor surrounded by a mud wall, outside of which were some two or three bundle, maybe a few hundred willow trees. Wang Jin then stepped to the door and knocked several times. A servant appeared, saying, oh, What brings you to our house? Ah, to tell you the truth, Wang Jin said, I and my mother have been traveling too long and too late to find ourselves any lodging for the night. Here we are with no place to stay in. We would like to prevail on your hospitality for one night. We promise to pay you for the inconvenience. I hope you can give us assistance. Oh, you just wait here then, huh? The servant said he got inside for a while. He came out again saying, the squire asked you to come in. Wang Jin then helped his mother to get down from the horse. He picked up his carrying pole and took the horse by the bridle, following the servant inside. 
Wang Jin put down his burden on the floor and tied the horse to a tree. And his mother were taken to a room where the master received them. Well, the master of the house was an old man of over 60 years and his hair was silvery white. He wore the hood for warmth and protection from the dust and a loose robe and leather boots with an air of a well-off class. Wang Jin immediately pro protested himself, but the squire stopped him. Uh, please, my dear traveller, don't do that. You have suffered the trials of the road. You must sit down and have some rest. So mother and son then seated themselves. Uh, where are you from? The squire asked them. Why is it that you arrived like this late after dark? Uh, my name is Zhang, Wang Jin gave a faint reply. I am uh, from the capital. Lately I have exhausted my resources and I have no more support. So I'm going to Yan'an to seek help from some relatives. Today, without thinking, we push on too far and pass the inn where we might have stopped. So we now seek your hospitality just for one night. We shall be moving tomorrow. Uh, of course, we would pay you. Well, well said, well said. There's no need for that, the squire said. In these times, who can carry his house with him? Now, I think you and your mother have not eaten yet. Uh, let me tell the servant to prepare some food for you. Huh? In a little while, a table had been set up in the hall, and a tray of four different kinds of vegetables and a dish of beef was brought right in front of the guests. In a poor village like this, we have little to offer, the squire said. Please pardon us. Wang Jin realized that this was just a humble, polite expression. While they're using the dinner, the servants came out to pour the wine. Duh, duh, duh. Ah. Ah. Uh, we are only sorry to give you trouble, Wang said. I don't know what we can do to thank you. Well, it doesn't matter, the squire answered. Uh, let us drink some wine, come on. Uh, he made them drink six or seven cups while the food was being served. When they had finished, the servant cleared away the dishes and the old man showed them to the guest room where they were to rest. Wang Jin said, and my mother is traveling on horseback, and if it's not interrupting you too much, I would like the horse to be put in the stable and fed. I would pay you for that too. Ah, uh, it's no problem. The old man sh shook his hand and said, we have uh, mm, livestock here ourselves. I'll tell my people to bring you, uh, to bring your horse in and 
fed him. Eh? Wang Jin thanked him with all his heart and took his belongings into the bedroom. A servant lit the lamb and brought warm water for them to wash their feet. The squire returned to his, to his place and the travellers both thanked them. Uh, even uh, the subordinates closed the door and settled down to rest. Next morning, there being no sign of the visitors getting up, after the day had dawned, the squire and his servant went to listen to their door. They heard the old woman groaning and sighing. The squire called out, Ah! Guest! It's morning time to get up and leave! Wang Jin appeared at once and greeted the old man. Oh, I have long been up, he said. I fear we gave you a long disturbance yesterday and uh, we are very sorry. But why is that your mother groaning like that? The old man asked. Oh, I shall not hide this to you, Wang replied. My mother is worn out after so many days travel. Last night she began to feel heart pains. Well, in this case, the squire said, take it easy then, let your mother stay in and take rest in my house for more days. Well, if you like to learn more, just listen to chapter 5.